Friends, amigos, compadres, hombres, what's happening? It's Pete Thorne. I'm in my studio right now, as you know. And, uh, hey, it's the Honeycomb from Denmark, from Carl Martin. These guys know their compressors. This is a company that years and years ago came out with the compressor limiter pedal, the original Carl Martin compressor limiter. It became a favorite of many guitarists. I had on my board for a while. First guy that comes to mind is Andy Timmons. Uh, I think it's kind of like an always-on box for him. Became a big part of his guitar sound. He's got a great sound, so he knows tone. Andy knows tone. Another Andy, Andy Wood, he used one for a long time as well. And so they just really know compressors. That original uh, Carl Martin compressor limiter had this great sound that was just kind of like, I don't know, just like a pump up your sound, but kind of transparent at the same time. It wasn't like a Ross or like a Dynacomp or a really obviously like compressed thing necessarily, which is maybe why some of these guys could use them as their always on pedal. Now it ran at kind of high voltage, 12 volts, I think. I think the original one had a power cord so that was always you know added a little extra little layer of like how am i going to power this thing what i'm going to plug this into if you've got a pedal power supply so the first thing with this one it also runs internally at 12 volts so it's got lots of headroom and whatnot but you just plug nine volts into it so it's got a nine volt input here and then it bumps up the power internally to 12 volts and so you can get that great sound of the the higher voltage higher headroom all that good stuff and i think uh this is supposedly rather similar in some other ways to the original carl martin compressor limiter but they simplified it so you've just got a compression knob here and a level knob and then you've also got on this pedal which is real special a dry mix knob now the dry mix allows you to do parallel compression that means you can blend in your original dry guitar signal without any compression along with the compressed signal so that lends itself to getting a really nice full hybrid kind of compressed sound where you can get as much squish and as much sustain as you want but not lose the punch and attack so in practice I used it on all the guitar parts and the bass guitar on the song at the beginning of the video and I found myself gravitating towards a certain setting a lot which is kind of what you see right there uh, the compression knob at around 10 10 30 something like that and both the level and the dry mix right around noon that just worked for just about everything I was trying to do now on that track I cut a stereo pair of 12 strings for that part I wanted to hit a chord and just have it sustain endlessly so I did turn up the compression to maybe noon I think on that part or so but for a lot of the parts I just found that sort of 10 30 noon noon sort of setting to really work well so I'm going to solo some of the parts from the song at the beginning of the video outside of the mix you're going to hear the effect right on this very first thing I'm going to show you here and you heard this right at the beginning of the video the on off effect of just pumping up my clean sound and how good it sounded to turn on the compressor and just get the guitar even when clean just pushed right forward in the mix and it's easier to play everything check this out So I just recorded the rhythm part for the song at the beginning of the video, kind of the first part that starts the song. And a compressor helps with a sound like this, like so much, you know, just a straight up 
clean sound, basically dry, clean sound, a little bit of room verb on that. But other than that, there's nothing between my guitar and the amp other than the compressor. And uh, so obviously like for the verse rhythm part, the part that starts the song, a compressor is really helpful. Without it, it sounds like this. Okay, if I turn on the compression. I mean, it just makes things way more fun, way more exciting, and way sweeter. The honeycomb, come on. Sorry, I had to. Terrible, terrible. But anyways, in the chorus, that's where things really get helped out by some compression. Because what I'm doing in the chorus is I'm actually sliding around on a little root fifth chord thing. And um, it would get lost without the, uh, the compressor to help kind of even things out and keep it right at the forefront. So this is the way the part sounds with no compression. Right, and it's kind of hard to keep, by the last chord, like the sound's fading a little bit because I'm just doing one pick attack. But turn on the compressor. It's all very in your face and up front, so. It just sounds so much better with a compressor and without. And this is the way that I always use a compressor. It's kind of like an always on, pump up my clean sound sort of thing. If I'm playing clean, I've got a compression sound that's happening like this, basically. And this one does what I like really, really well. And for this sound that starts the video, uh, I've got the pedal definitely set to boost, but the knobs are kind of like pointed straight up at noon, except for the compression, which is at like 10.30. So you, you can definitely hear that I'm getting a little bit of a boost when I turn on the pedal, but I like that. I like when it just gets a little bit louder when I turn on the compression. Usually that's my thing. Um, so. Let's try and just experiment with the controls a little bit at this setting. I'll turn the dry control all the way down. Let's hear what that sounds like. It gets a little less natural as soon as I bring it down, you know? With the dry mix in there, it just sounds like, well, you've got dry mixed in, so you're getting a little bit more of a natural, um, you know, still got that tack in there of the chords, and it's not just all compression. <laughs> So I was just cutting the bass on the song at the beginning of the video, and I thought, let's try it on bass, and it works great on bass. So um, I'm using my favorite setting. This is what I seem to keep gravitating towards on this pedal. Dry mix on about half, level just above noon, and the compression amount is about 1030. And I'll just play a little bit now and turn the pedal on and off, and then I'll also jam with the drums and turn the pedal on and off while I'm doing that. And you'll hear the big difference it makes pushing the bass forward. So I just cut the lead guitar parts on the track at the beginning of the video, and I decided what I'd do is try and use a compressor for this as well, the solo. So I ran into uh, channel two on my PT-15. I've got it set on about 1030 on the gain on channel two, and it's kind of a, like basically decidedly martially rhythm toned uh, gain wise. <laughs> You 
could play like low gain lead with that, I guess, and it would be okay. But for a song like this, it's got lots of guitars going on. I really wanted the guitar to sing. I need more gain than that. So instead of adding tube gain on the amp or hitting it with an overdrive, you can always go with a compressor. It's gonna give you a really smooth sustain and just kind of smooth out all the parts and make it really even, really make it sing. And in a way that's like not aggressive like an overdrive or more tube gain would. Uh, so I'll show you what it sounds like. <laughs> You know, it's got a smoother quality to it, a real singing quality to it that's really nice, and it's it's not really like adding an overdrive. Now, you hear the noise floor comes up a little bit, but in the mix, you don't really hear that. That's with any compressor, because what a compressor does is it compresses the sound, which includes bringing up the quiet parts, part of that's the noise floor, and bringing down the loud parts and compressing it into a smaller space, and just that's what you're hearing. So I really like it, when, especially when I'm playing like the, uh, the kind of chordal stuff, like going... <laughs> And then anytime I go for a long held note like that, it's really fun. But you can hear when I was playing the chords, it just makes it super smooth. And you, you know, you can play like little dyads and things and cool little arpeggios and stuff. And it really makes the parts all like audible in the mix, even with a busy mix with lots of guitars going on. And I really like the parts where I was like bending and um, not needing to attack the string again when I, I could just like hammer on and then do a bend again, kind of the part where it went from major to minor in that one part. I'll show you what I mean and how it just really works well for things like this. Bending, harmonics, all that, it makes it easy and expressive and fun. Things just jump off the guitar neck. It's cool. It's a Danish high-end compressor, it says so right there. The Honeycomb from my friends at Carl Martin. Uh, really good sounding pedal uh, in the Carl Martin compressor tradition. They know compressors. Uh, the original Carl Martin was one of my favorite compressor pedals. I had it on my board for a long time. And you know what? Well, great thing about this one is it's a lot smaller too. I haven't mentioned that yet. But this new pedal housing they're using, I really like it. Uh, it's got this kind of rounded edge on it here, kind of a traditional switch there, but it's, it's like modern and clean looking and a nice update uh, to the old Carl Martin design, I think. You can check it out further, the link in the video description below. Click there, it'll take you to more info and everything you could possibly want to know about the Carl Martin Honeycomb. Please hit subscribe if you haven't hit the little bell besides the subscribe. You'll get an alert when I put out new videos. I am Pete Thorne. Take care, you guys. See ya.